Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sayyidi, how to bring the love of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu and Ahlul Bayt into our hearts? Yeah. <laughs> Make your salawats, your programs, the zikrs, all the things that we're doing. If you follow all the guidance and all these programs and zikrs and the, the awrads, the salawats, everything is all to bring people to that love, to love of Prophet and love what Prophet loves of his companions. But his family, his family have a different rank than companions. You know, these are the, 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 the blood that Allah has given to them and the bloodline that Allah has given to them. They have a responsibility and a love for that love so that the family has its rank, the companions have a rank and they should all be loved and respected. And these are why these celebrations are all encompassing upon all the loves and all of the realities so that to make our, our ishq and our… and to make Prophet to be happy with our ishq and our love to be complete and common inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, my life is too easy. Does that mean Allah does not love me? No, I think you asked that last time too. But be thankful, don't make it a challenge in which the angels hear you say something like that and they make things to be difficult. That Allah don't, does not test the servant beyond the ability to, to be tested. But do your awrads, do your zikr, do your muhabbat, do your, your practices inshaAllah and always remain blessed inshaAllah. Don't pray for difficulty to come. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. I would like to know whether animals can be sensitive to tariqah because I'm noticing specific animals or pets are very attentive to mawlids and shaykh's talks. Sure. All animals are attuned to energy. That's why if you go to animal parks now there's lots of attacks, right? These poor fish that are very sensitive to energy, they live on, on, on a sonar, they live on a sound, they live on energy. And then they're eating their trainers and biting them and it's why? Because the horrific energy of people coming is being passed on to them. And they're contained within a dirty water that they can't go back to the ocean to clean themselves. So what's happening? Then they're taking these energies and attacking people because it's not in their nature to be confined and then to be dressed by these horrific energies upon people. Now imagine then every creature has an energy, every creature has an ishq and a love for its family and its existence the way Allah wants it to love. So most definitely those domesticated creatures that people have, they're tuned to the energy of their master, of the one who takes care of them, feeds them and cleans them. So they're happy when you're happy, they're sad when you're sad, they're angry when you're angry. So you can see the reflection of bad people into their bad creatures. And they look the same because the creature is following with such a tarbiyah that just follows and as a result of following you see the, the creature begin to look like its owner and will carry the characteristic of the owner. If the owner is kind and loving then the creature is kind and loving to the owner not to other people. And then if you see the owner is uh, wild and violent you see the creatures are very aggressive because they're picking up the energy. So everything picks up energy definitely, inshaAllah that's a… It's a basic understanding for that energy practices and everything we do of good energy releases a tremendous amount of positive energy that can heal creatures, heal everything and heal ourselves inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah How can we make long meditation? Please guide us. Yeah, meditation is like an adab so when the the connection is strong and let's say the practices have been refined. It's an adab that to go into their presence, keep the connection, do what's necessary and get out. 
So it's like somebody calling and say, I want to come and spend time with the shaykh, I just want to sit in front of him for three days. There's no shaykh going to sit with you for three days because their time is not like that. So the meditation world is no different because it's a real, more real than the physical. So the adab that they've been trained and when the connections and all the practices are finished and they have a strong connection, they make their connection, they make their request, they ask for the du'a, they spend the minimal amount of time and then they move out of that meditation to keep the adab. Otherwise then their meditation can't be real if they're trying to sit for hours and, and to, to be in that presence. We described in our early training many times that uh, when the meditations were becoming real and then we would see ourselves with Mawlana then we would go into a presence and then we would do like, bizarre things in that presence, cry, jump down, go like this, do like that and over, overly emotional and then one time physically said, stop doing that, you're embarrassing me. What? He says, stop doing that, keep your head up, keep yourself and sort of under discipline there, association is more real than your physical. So that was quick in our training that keep yourself, keep yourself quiet, keep yourself perfumed, fragrance and with complete adab and respect. As soon as you make your connection, it's a very real connection. When you believe it to be real and you conduct yourself with that realness, then you make your request, ask for your support, feel the energy, the dressing, the blessing. And as that connection becomes realer and realer, then you're always feeling their fires. But then you're connecting to make a conveyance that you're asking for a du'a, you're asking for a resolution in a, in a difficulty or for something, then they make the connection and they retreat from that with all blessings, asking thank you, thank you and, and making du'as and, and retreating from that. But just to see yourself sitting for hours in their presence and n not really achieving because it, it keeps with the manners. So you, you spend time trying to learn how to connect. And that's not a problem, breathe, meditate, find a sense of peace for yourself. But then when the connections become stronger then it's you know, make a certain amount of time and, and then you pull out of that, inshaAllah. Uh, as alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Can evil people try to take away our faith? That's the whole of these teachings. The Dajjal is an <laughs> evil person and all evil beings, yeah. That's the whole system that's been designed is to pull the faith and the light of people, right? So TikTok is to take your faith away, Instagram is to take your faith away, Facebook is to take your faith away, your television is to take your faith away, your music is to take your faith away. They said the high priests you have to understand their system that we keep trying to, to promote is that for saints of Islam then they are Muhammadiyun. They propagate the kingdom of Sayyidina Muhammad because the awliya they don't get things wrong. They don't overly talk about a reality that's so high and they cut out their imam. That's against an adab. So when you have a shaykh you don't talk about yourself, you talk about the shaykh. So then imagine a shaykh not talking about his imam but talking more about the Creator. That sounds overly too high that all that you talk about, how come you're not talking about the one whom you take your fires from? Your shaykh, if not your shaykh then Prophet So they keep their adab on how they teach and how they talk. You see the signs of them. And that's their character, that's why they're trained like that. And for his high priests they are of uh, influencer. So the reason he gives them a title because he's not moving to the heavens, he's trying to destroy people. So the ones whom destroy the most amount of people those are his high priests. So imagine that in priests in the old time who work for devils, they would have an event and what hundred thousand people might come? These high priests have a hundred million people following them, tweeting to them, Instagramming onto them. So these are very high level priests for dajjal. 
and that's why he pays them 100 million, 200 million, 300 because it's the treasures of this earth and that's all he has to give to them. So he gives these huge treasures of earth for them to corrupt the souls, the minds and the heart of people. So these are very high level priests in Dajjal's system. They're not normal people, they're not people that uh, think they just got that by coincidence. These are his priests. So when we understand and recognize that system, then we understand who's this side and who's that side, inshaAllah. And Prophet warned us about that. Uh, as Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Is sharing the knowledge in different ways considered as giving to take away bad character? JazakAllah khairan. Yes, yeah, sharing the links, not talking. Don't share stories and talks and incorrectly quoting the teachings. But to take the links, the videos, to take what's already been written by a shaykh, not even quoting him, but take the actual words from the talk and propagating those, yes, because we're spreading their knowledge and a knowledge that's beneficial for people to come towards the shaykh, not to identify yourself. Because when you spread the teachings then they're coming to you, then you using the shaykh to build people towards yourself. That's then against the adab because they come to you then you begin to misguide, mismanage an inappropriate character, then the people become misguided. So when we share the links is what the shaykhs are teaching, get the video, share the video, get the article, share the article, get the charity link, share the charity link, go to the store and say, get this sunnah item, share the link. All of those bring people to the shaykh and that's what's beneficial so that the shaykh can deal with them, interact with them, talk with them. That's why we kept the help me at Nur Muhammad, nobody should be uh, messaging anyone else, no sh nobody should be messaging on WhatsApp, on Facebook, on Facebook Messenger. None of it is necessary that something you're doing yourself that's wrong if they're doing it. They should only be emailing help me at nurmuhammad.com so that the communication and the relationship is built with the shaykh. So that the shaykh is interacting with you, not that you think somebody else can facilitate something for you, pass a message for you, actually it works against your account and it's making the other person to be sick. So it's a direct communication to help me at nurmuhammad.com because that relationship has to be established. That fires and the connection has to be established with the students, if they're not establishing that then they're establishing it with something that is not going to be of benefit to themselves. And it makes the other people to become sick and weakened because now people are relying on them and sending their sins and burdens upon that person. If they're not able to carry it, which nobody is because they don't have that system of, of connecting and releasing to the higher powers and higher associations, then it will contaminate you. So imagine that if somebody communicating with somebody on Facebook Messenger, I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm crazy, I have too many bad desires and you think it's is entertaining, I'll communicate back with them. But you have to visualize it's like a rope that you just took a rope onto somebody and as they're talking it's being downloaded onto you and download it onto you. You may not see the signs at first but it has been sent onto you. You become sick, you become burdened, you become filled with these bad characteristics and, and or sicknesses. If people start texting you, I got this, I got this, I got this, you start interacting with them, you are going to now carry that sickness. So this can be a very dangerous system. As a result, they said, email, email help me at nurmuhammad.com let the shaykhs interact with that and the shaykhs have been trained on how their shaykhs above will pull. That's why they have an ijazah. The ijazah is a certificate from Allah from Sayyidina Muhammad and from their, their big shaykhs of the tariqah that wherever you go that we are pulling from you and supporting you. One we're taking the burdens so you go in the front. And as a result we're also sending the fires to you to reach to these people. And as a result they're within that system and then they have the particle and the wavelength reality. 
So these are all systems that have been put in place to protect people and to bless people. If people don't operate within that reality, that's up to them. That's why I don't think the shaykh is stupid and doesn't know. He knows exactly who's doing what. But it seems like people want to hold the electrical wire. So you hold it and if you enjoy it then alhamdulillah. They know exactly what's happening, they just don't speak about it. As a question from last week's soba. Yeah. Can we ever feel that we have moved from a particle state to a waveform? The minute you feel it, you'll know. Right? So, that was the whole discussion is that the particle was in Sufi terminologies be nothing. So, people in this day and age, they say, oh, What's this be nothing? It's so insulting that we, we have to have pride, we have to have recognition, oh, that's garbage. Your, your seed until you plant yourself. Once you begin to plant yourself and be nothing, to be nothing, to be nothing and then strong in your meditation practices because that's the soil. As soon as you close your eyes as if a layer of dirt was thrown upon you and it's just you making a connection. When that connection is stronger and stronger of course they begin to feel the, the wave. So these are all in a science talk that you can find in very extravagant Arabic but that's not how we teach. So when you isolate yourself you begin to feel the fires, you begin to feel the khashf and the vision. What is a khashf? What does a, as a temporary or short vision mean? Means that Allah released your wave. In an instant either you caught a vision from that wave or Allah sent your wave to witness something. So this is the scientific understanding so that people can understand this is science based versus complicated Arabic of old texts which we never read because we don't read Arabic in that sense. But we can teach you Arabic. So these are important in the realities and when you understand scientifically it's proven. You're, you're a dual nature, you have particle and you have wave. Break your particle and Allah will free the wave reality and only through the wave reality you can gain knowledge, right? So the, the particle can't gain knowledge. The particle are the ulama who teach, they're not waves, they memorize books and when they get older they forgot what they memorized. So. That's something different. They memorize, memorize, memorize the external ulama, they memorize and as a result they're tar- talking particles. But if Allah wants from them to become a wave, He sends, he sends Shamsa Tabriz, right? So this is an eternal station. So Sayyidina Jalaluddin was a particle, but the Salah Siru, particle professor, he was an Islamic scholar carrying lots of books and teaching very tough until he met Shams tabriz Again that's why we're Shams al-Arifin and all this school is based on the, the highest levels of the reality of the sun. And he was Shams tabriz the highest point of the sun, means I'm here to cook you, so follow my way. And as a result of that relationship with Shams he began to destroy his three states of matter destroy his physical state of matter and then to take him to a liquid state. From solid he has to be burned into a liquid state. So that liquid state again burned again until it became ethereal and gaseous. Gaseous is your wave reality. So again in science there are three states of matter. Either your solid matter, you can't do nothing with solid matter, it can just talk for people until it becomes liquid matter and that's why solid matter is very aggressive and angry. So external ulama are very angry people. Have you ever questioned them? Very angry because they're solid, they're not very flexible and as a result their teachings are very flexible. Now a hundred years ago all of them were particle and wave. They were external but they were immense in their way of reality and very patient and tolerant. Now their training is just very solid, 
So what happens then with the shaykhs is that you have to be burned, lots of energy put upon that person to melt their solid and become liquid. Liquid state is… goes with everything. Anything you put them in they're very liquid, lucid, calm, everything is alright, we'll resolve it. So these were the ulama of the past that they were zahiri and they had an immense eternal state and that's why when they taught, they taught with two wings going out and capturing people and hundreds of thousands would come into Islam. So that, that's the difference. When that state is lost and no longer practice and nobody wants to sort of practice the realities of light, then they just become particles that are talking solid, intolerant because the solid state is angry with everyone. Liquid state sort of molds with everything, right? They don't scream, they don't yell, they don't shout, they don't have majlises, hundred thousand people protesting on the street, screaming and yelling at everybody, five people get shot for no reason. That's not a, a shaykh from a liquid state. Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. How to keep elements balanced if one is lethargic and easily angered, being heavy in their earth and fire elements? Forgive my ignorance. Yeah, keeping elements balanced is, is all the teaching, right? So all the meditation, all the energy practices that if you're fiery nature you have to keep your anger down, that you have to keep your state of wudu and, and empower your water and your physical element to counter. So each of the different elements has its own counter. If you're of a fiery nature they have to ground you more and then teach you more about the reality of your water. So then the reality of your water is to purify your inner power, your water power, your angelic reality. So lots of fasting for a fiery natured person. As soon as they fast then the fire that's running through their veins because shaitan runs through their veins. As a result of their fasting that shaitan becomes weakened then the water element of their body is more angelic. Then when they make their salawats, they meditate and they ground themselves in meditation, then they can bring out a, a strength within their reality. So nobody can have too much of an angelic element, it's only the fire element that is the most dangerous. The physical element, the earth element, when they're just too earthly, then they have to meditate and do the practices to bring out their internal fire to strive. When they're too earthly they just want to sit on a couch and eat. They don't want to come for zikr, they don't want to do any practices, they're becoming like a potato, they're growing into a couch. So then the practices then are to increase their fire and in purify their water. So then they increase the fires to give them a himma, do the zikrs, do the practices and uh, do the meditation so that the shaykh's energies can come in to give you a fire and a zeal in which to try to conquer, conquer yourself, conquer the earth and to be of service to Allah And then the salawats and all of the spiritual practices is again to illuminate the blood so that to illuminate the light and the energy that's flowing through the blood inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.